Okay, uh, we're glad that you're still there and uh, watching uh, the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're now going to be talking about the United Front for World Immunization Week and African Vaccination Week. We do know that we have World Immunization Day sometimes in November, I think November 10th or so. And we also have World Immunization Week, which underscores the importance of immunization, I'm very sure. But we are going to be talking uh, with Dr. Anire Chima Aduko. Oduko, rather, public health physician who is here with us. Good morning and welcome to the program, Doctor. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Mm. We're hearing World Immunization Day, World Immunization Week, and then Africa Vaccination Week. Would work us through what the differences are. So, World Immunization Week is being celebrated world over. Africa Vaccination Week is part of the celebration of World Immunization Week. So, it's happening in Africa. It's our version of it. So they happen concurrently at the same time. What's the difference? Because There's because really no difference. World Immunization Week mm. is... We just world. wanted it black. Yes. So <laughs> Africa Vaccination Week okay. is um, organized by the um, African region of the World Health Organization. Okay. So the, most of the activities done are based in Africa. Mm. So why, why do we have to have a World Immunization Day and then we have World Immunization Week? World Immunization Week um, um, highlights the importance of immunization. Immunization is such a critical part of our public health system that it deserves a whole week to talk about it and um, bring out issues to the front burner. Mm -hmm. So even though we have a day for it, a week is also very important. Mm -hmm. It, it's, so it's, highlight all the it issues. It sounds more like Mother's Day in Nigeria. It never <laughs> ends. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, but um, immunization. Let's let's look about the significance of this World Immunization uh, Week. Okay. You've you've touched a little bit about why it is so important to mm -hmm. highlight this and that. So um, let's look at the theme first for this year. You know, the theme for this year is um, uh, humanly possible. Mm -hmm. immunization for all mm -hmm. what uh, informed the choice of this theme so the choice of this theme underscores the importance of um, increasing access to vaccination for everyone irrespective of their status where they stay mm. whether rural or urban so we are saying that it is humanly possible for everyone everywhere to have access to the vaccines they need to live a healthy life sometimes it's not the problem of the vaccine that might be um available but the people are not ready to accept it so how far have you gone yes. to sensitize the people to accept vaccination or immunization so that is one of the problems of vaccination today and that is one of the issues that warrants an um, immunization week where we talk about the problems and challenges we are facing and like you rightly mentioned vaccine hesitancy is a big problem trying to undermine the successes that we have gained over the years from immunization. So um, the, that's why I'm having this media conversation today. A lot of people do not know why vaccines are important. They do not know the significance of vaccines to protecting not just their health personally, but the health of the entire communities. So there's a lot of misinformation, disinformation. You have people who are anti-vax they for some reason there's an anti-vaccination movement um, stemming from the west that has crept into africa and nigeria whereby people because of their own opinions feel that um, maybe vaccines should be made optional it shouldn't be everybody that should um, use it and they're trying to spread this message and spreading fear in the mind of the people so that they reject um, vaccines so leading to vaccine hesitancy so um, it's really um, due to ignorance number one at the, because some people don't know they just had don't take it they don't know why they should not take vaccines it's also due to people have political interests people have their own reasons why they do certain things you know there are a lot of um, undercurrents okay however the um, message we are trying to preach today is that vaccines are important they are safe they are effective we've been using them for over 50 years over 100 years 
Uh -huh. Even this um, African Vaccination Week, we are celebrating 50 years of the expanded program on immunization. In 1974, um, immunization was officially, the program was officially um, inaugurated to ensure increased access all over the world. So that's where the program started. You know, today we have a national program on immunization where uh, babies can go to the hospital and get vaccines for free. Um, every country has their own immunization program. Okay, so it started officially in 1974. And since then, we've been able to avert over 80% of um, um, infant mortality has reduced. So it's so important. It has reduced deaths of children. Um, I don't know if... Yes, we've been able to, yes, yes we've yeah. been able to er eliminate poliomyelitis mm -hmm. and this wild polio virus has been eradicated. So we still have some um, strains here and there, but there's, we are almost kicking polio out for good. It's just in two countries now, I think Afghanistan, Nigeria does not have any wild polio virus mm -hmm. again. Um, smallpox, which is to kill people, has been eradicated. So there are successes. Our children are living longer. You have more children not dying before they are five years old. Mm. So they are successes. <laughs> yeah, but, but I'm also interested in the success of, uh, you know, getting into the hinterlands, especially the north. Those, that's mm -hmm. where we had more problems when it mm -hmm. comes to uh, resistance to immunization and all that. How would you raise, raise the success story so far in 50 years uh, in those areas that were resistant to immunization? There has been progress. There has been progress, not 100 percent, and that is why we still have to have this week. And we are also um, we are also losing out on some gains due to other factors such as um, the Boko Haram issue, insurgency, mm, yeah. insecurity, humanitarian crisis. When we have such issues, people are displaced from, from their homes. It um, disrupts healthcare systems. So there have we've been we've made some we've made a lot of gains. We've made a lot of gains, but there's still work to be done. And that is why we're having this conversation. So there are places that um, we are not even able to access because they are so remote. Not everywhere right now is getting the, vac the vaccines they should. Not because they are not available, but because they are so remote. People cannot get there. Sometimes you have to... Um, logistic issues. So there are still problems. Okay, And then knowledge, like you said, where people are resisting because they've had something wrong. Mm -hmm. So it's part of the work we are doing. It's part of the advocacy we are trying to raise that we still need more funds put into immunization. Everything can be solved in money when we have the <laughs> <laughs> Yes, when there is money, a lot of... I will not say what crossed my mind now. But <laughs> okay, so, but, but who drives this process of, you know, funding and all that? Is it solely a government thing or you're also asking for funding from other uh, sectors? Okay, so it's... Um, we, you have Gavi. There are organizations that work... Um, for immunization. The World Health Organization mm. coordinates all these things and partners. Um, you have the Gavi, you have their funds for this and of course governments. Governments have to be at the forefront. The governments of various countries have to be at the forefront of this. But they're usually um, assisted by donors, external countries, external funding. Mm. But ultimately it's, it's the bulk um, stops at the government table who is responsible for providing health for its citizens. What, what are some of the most challenging uh, problems you face uh, in trying to um, get this immunization to everywhere? Because when the government is called upon to fund or individuals are called upon to fund, they should know specific things that are lacking uh, that are making the job very cumbersome for the people. Okay. So right now, you know, challenges um, evolve. So right now, the major issues that immunization is facing are um, vaccine hesitancy, mm -hmm. the issue of knowledge, mistrust, distrust, then logistic issues, how to make sure everybody gets it, especially in remote areas, especially in areas with humanitarian crisis. Because the thing is, when it, there's a humanita humanitarian crisis, services are disrupted and it will still affect us. Mm -hmm. um, we have shortage of healthcare staff. Um, I, know, I know you've heard of the Jack Bassin <laughs> yeah, doctors this, uh, and everybody. nurses. So yeah. there's a shortage of staff. Infrastructure is still not as it should be. You know, we still need more research concerning immunization. How the um, new um, discussion is, why can't we make some of, some of our vaccines here at home? Most of the vaccines are um, they're not made here in um, Nigeria or in Africa. So there's still a lot of research to be done as to how can we do things better? Mm -hmm. How can we increase the supply chain? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, well, so it is a possibility. There's that possibility the vaccines can be produced here. Of course. What with is the right funding, with the right research. Everybody, everything it's, comes back to funding. Yeah, everything comes back to funding. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <It's> funding. <laughs> uh, well, we had the scary issue of uh, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, did that help to spread the gospel of vaccination or it helped to dampen it? I think it helped to dampen it. It dampened really? it. Yes, it did. It did a lot of, you know, um, COVID, that was where um, mis vaccine misinformation was, was at its um, all-time highest. A lot of people, if, I, don't, I don't want to start propagating some of, the, some of the myths I heard, but if you can remember, there were a lot of myths about vaccines. No, don't mm. take it. It is this. They want to do this to us. Mm. It is metallic or something like that. So it increased distrust at an all-time high all over the world. So it has, and then of course the pandemic itself, whereby they had to do lockdowns mm -hmm. and then children missed their doses. So it has actually reversed some of the gains we made before the, the pandemic, which we are mm. trying to catch up now. Mm. So some of the gains we had already made reduced or reversed because of the pandemic. So COVID did the facts, it did more harm than good. Oh, that's, that's terrible. <laughs> what about like in the villages, especially mm -hmm. the places that you are not able to enter? Are they left to fate? What do you do no. to areas like that? No, that's what we are talking about. You can't leave them to fate. There are people there. If they, the problem with why this is so important is one, COVID made it clear that if somebody has an issue, even Ebola, I, can't know, I don't even remember Ebola, if somebody has an infectious disease anywhere, Nobody is safe because it spreads. Mm -hmm. Such diseases spread. So people in very remote areas, you don't know the one that's okay, I want to come to the city today and spread the infection. It mm -hmm. can still spread. Mm -hmm. So if anybody, if nobody, if one person is at risk, the community is at risk. So we cannot do nothing. We can't just say, oh, yeah. So what do you do? In the, okay, it's just in, to in improve our strategy, our logistics. How do we? People need to go. And people canoes. have been going. By canoes and go to yes, the areas. Yes, people have been going. They've been going. They've been doing it. And that's where we're talking about shortage of staff. But people to do it are reducing. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Money, of course, you need money. If you find money and you can pay people to go there, they will do. So we need to, how do we do things better? More strategy, more research on how to improve what we're already doing so that more people can be reached. How much engagement do you have with uh, with the traditional institutions, for instance? Because they are the first town criers that you have, they're the first evangelists that you have, if you want to talk about these things. Mm -hmm. So uh, what is your level of interaction with them? Very good. We know, as a public health physician, of course we are aware that community engagement is a pillar. Mm -hmm. There's, and um, community leaders are gatekeepers. If a traditional leader says no, you cannot immunize my people, you won't immunize them. If a religious leader says no, you cannot talk to these people and say don't take it, they will not take. So of course, as part of the strategy, community engagement with key influential um, community leaders is a very strong strategy. So of course there are interactions with them. Yes, it can be better, but there is already. Mm. Have, you, have you encountered any challenges in your course of you know, engaging them? Uh, yes, of course they have their biases, they have their own preconceived opinions and that's where ed health education comes in, where you try to talk to them and say no it's not like this, educate them. Most times with education and evidence they're usually convinced. Okay, uh, well, let's look at alternatives for instance. Um, in, in maternity health, we have uh, bed attendants, traditional bed attendants. A lot of people say they are not supposed to be there, uh, but some others say they need training. And they've been given training in some places where they do things that when the nurses are not there, when the professionals are not there, they step in to do the, the thing that they can do. Have you considered you know, having ad hoc staff within the communities that if you cannot enter, at least they will be on ground to do what they're supposed to do. This is their terrain. They know how to navigate and all that. Have you ever considered yes, that? Yes, of course. We have what they call community health extension workers. Okay. Mm -hmm. They are not. Um, they are not nurses. So if you go into every community now, you find them. Yes, not. It, they have to also be trained to receive some level of training. And as part of our strategy, 
when you're entering a community, you don't go like that. You must go with somebody in the community that knows the community. If not, you meet resistance. You, I don't know if you've heard of um, health workers that have been killed when they go for... Mm -hmm. So you don't just enter like that. You must go with someone that knows the people and that the people trust. So yes, we are aware of that and we are working with that as well. Okay, so as you call on the government to do the needful, what can individuals do? Okay, individuals what i'm doing now they need to know that vaccines are safe they're effective we don't just come and say take a vaccine without rigorously testing them they go through rigorous testing so then they need to trust the science they need to avail their um their, their selves and their children to take immunization to take their vaccine so take your vaccines encourage your sister your mom to um, immunize her children. So because vaccine hesitancy spreads with gossip and wrong just stop spreading wrong information. Do not spread something you've not verified. Mm. Go and check. So take, take your, um, first of all, you take, make sure your child is fully immunized, you are fully immunized, and then spread the good news. Encourage other people to go and take, because when they take, you also are protected. Yeah, there, there's some people in the community that are the, forgive the term, money bags, and they might want to key into this. What channels do they need to pass through? Because we know most of the cancer foundations mm -hmm. are run by individuals who maybe had a murder, a mother who passed or a child who passed or something. They want to do something for the community and they run a foundation like that. But if you want to also be a part of this immunization process or uh, making sure that everything gets to where they should get to, mm -hmm. funding, like you say, money can buy everything and all that. So what channels do they need to pass through? So you go to the governments, the governments of the nation, Okay, that's the, because they are the ones with the um, responsibility overall for providing healthcare. Um, during COVID, there was a coalition, CAR COVID, coalition against yeah. COVID or something like mm -hmm. that. They provided a lot of funding for COVID in terms of isolation um, units and all. Yeah. So yes, there, there's a place for, for that, but go through the governments. We are always, the government is always looking for donors, our own donors, hmm. to do that. So go through the right channels, the government, Federal Ministry of Health, the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, you go through them. Now let's look at the in-between, you know, the, the people who are community uh, influencers or mm -hmm. community people that, uh, that are trusted in the community will have to go with you. The people have, who have the money may have to go to the government and all that. But what of in-between? When they the health staff, for instance, get into a community, what are the immediate things that the community itself can do to make the work of the health staff uh, a little bit easier? Yeah. Number one, they can provide a good environment, a conducive environment to work. Open your community up. So that's that. Allow, so why, how do you open your community up? Pro, um, provide protection, mm -hmm. security. Um, there's been a lot of um, attack on health staff. Mm -hmm. So um, then talk to your people, mobilize them to, to be receptive and assist in whatever way you can. So if um, you can also um, say, okay, these people, they trust them, let them join you to do mobilization, mm -hmm. that can work. So just telling your people, just a word, really. You don't need to do more. Just telling your people, ah, we trust them, we we'll allow them, give your children vaccination is enough. Telling your people, keep them safe, don't harm them. Is help as well. 50 years. <laughs> Immunization has, has, has endured in Nigeria as, as long as I have been alive. Okay, 50 years is quite a, a number. How would you assess um, your progress so far? You know, in Nigeria, I'm not talking about Africa now. In Nigeria, how would you assess this progress? Some things in Nigeria seem to be going backwards. Mm -hmm. I hope that's not the case with immunization. I know that pipe bomb water, for instance, we were seeing in the 60s where communities were launching pipe bomb water uh, and all that. Now you have to provide boreholes for yourself. No more pipe bomb community water like that, no. Uh, so how would you assess the progress so far made in immunization in Nigeria? I would say that it has been largely successful. It has been largely successful. That's a careful term to use. Yes, so, no, largely, <laughs> largely, largely, yes. Successful. It has not, in, okay, in Africa, mm -hmm. and Nigeria is a big part of Africa because we have a very huge population, um, infant mortality, that's deaths of a child less than five years old, um, less than one year old, infants mm -hmm. less than one year old, has been averted by 80%. 
So if that's quite a number, that's quite a number because of immunization. I don't know if you remember back in the days they used to talk about abiku or yeah. banje, yeah. a child that would and parents would, and then parents used to have plenty of children just in case um, the abiku takes some. Well, so you still have some remaining. Mm -hmm. And but now no, you can fairly expect that your child will live long. If you do the needful so i i would say immunization has been successful is um past we have a functional um national program on immunization that is working um the average nigerian even a poor person has confidence that if i take my child to a primary health care center i will get um i'll get vaccines for free mm -hmm. of course they are introducing this thing of okay by by um things like by um buy gloves or buy card of 100 naira but mm. well, it's still largely free so there has been progress yeah but, but you success. just casually mentioned that <laughs> should that ever happen it shouldn't it shouldn't where they say um, i have experienced it myself you go there they'll say ah you have to pay 100 naira or oh, that was like that was okay like five that was like five years ago <laughs> yeah when i had to immunize my own I, child I've, I've seen those things as well they'll happening. say buy these buy, buy that gloves. buy gloves buy card it shouldn't be really it shouldn't be so those are some of the things we should also um, um, um eliminate completely so that nobody is discouraged but so if things like that happen who do you report to how do you, you get this report to anybody because it is a system failure it's nobody's fault is if do you get it's not a person's fault it's a system failure <laughs> I don't understand how it's a system failure because so we've it, seen these people who've caught the culprits, they are doing what they're not supposed yes, to do. But they should be tell you that there's no fuel for the gen, that they need light. And these things are not provided by the people who sent them. Yes, there's no light. There's no glove. <laughs> wow. Our gloves are finished. And right now, even with um, gloves are now so expensive. They will tell you so when you go and look at sometimes they are being greedy, but sometimes when you see they are actually needs. So they're going to they're going to use light to mm. they need there are some things that need to maintain the facility. Oh, oh dear, this is scary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, well, just just on a, a lighter note, um, yes. what is your projection for the next ten years? You've you've by you I mean the uh, national program on immunization. You have endured for half a century. Mm -hmm. In the next ten years, what what progress do you intend to make? It is now eighty percent, like you're saying. Uh, yes. Do you intend to reach 100% or 90% or where do you see this program in the next 10 years? Okay, I see it um, getting... You know, now we have social media where mm -hmm. we can push all these narratives and all that. The mm -hmm. positive ones, even though the negative ones will also come in there. Mm -hmm. So what do, you, what do you see for this program in the next 10 years? I'm very positive and I'm very hopeful. We have done... It has been successful thus far and it will even get better. Um, um, governments are encouraged what we are doing is to encourage and advocate that immunization remains a foundation for health care mm. it is prioritized and if that continues because it's even cheaper it's cheaper to prevent um, mm. disease than to treat yeah. so if this continues with the trajectory the other things we want like um, um, allocate more funding for research so I see it's in the next 10 years with what I see I see it doing better I foresee that um, hopefully vaccines will be made in Nigeria, our supply chain of vaccines, logistics will improve, and we can, um, we can celebrate more wins. So there are already about 12, initially when the program started, it was just about five diseases that were covered. But now it has been expanded to 12, 12 diseases for children and one more for adults, including COVID. So more diseases can also be covered in time. Oh, we are having more diseases than... <laughs> yes, <laughs> than we there's more resurgence. Yeah, there's okay. re-emergence, resurgence. Uh, so, but we, we are hopeful that we would meet these challenges and even overcome them. That should have been the last question here. But let me just uh, ask you, as, on a personal note, are you comfortable with the health policies that the present administration is putting in place? Does it give you the hope that in those 10 years, you're going to achieve what you're hoping you'll, you'll achieve? Oh, that's a that's a very tricky question <laughs> but um i think the government can do better mm. they can do better especially in terms of retaining doctors there's an emergency right now our doctors our nurses our healthcare professionals are leaving the country in droves i do not see any um, tangible steps that this government is taking to retain our 
healthcare professionals in terms of remuneration, in terms of making the environment more conducive. I've not seen. They're talking of compulsory two or be five years. No, no, you uh, can't do that. Still you, work in Nigeria. No, you, you, it's not. But you make. We know why they are going. Don't we know why they are going? They are going because of they want better pay. Huh? Okay, I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think I think the government can do better with health. No, it, it, it wasn't the problem if you were mentioning the things that are making them go. But we've been talking about these things, and we hope that somebody somewhere is watching us and listening to what we're saying. The government can do better. Lagos State is trying to. I think Lagos State is trying in their health policies. I'll mm -hmm. give Lagos State a. They're doing, they're doing well, at least better than most other states in Nigeria. They should. They yeah. are. They are housing 10% of the <laughs> entire population of Nigeria. They yes. should do better. Yes. Well, we'd like to thank you, Doctor, for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure having you thank on you. our show this thank morning. Thank you very much. Very good. Okay, we've been talking about United Front for World Immunization Week. This is the week. The final week in April of every year is dedicated to these immunizations. How much are you doing in your community to make sure that this immunization is a message that resonates with everybody because that's where it starts from and then everybody begins to receive it. Uh, we've been talking with uh, uh, Dr. Anire Ochima Oduko. Did I get it right? Okay. She is a health physician and she's been talking with us this morning. And this eventually is where we wrap it up on the show this morning. We're hoping that you're going to join us again tomorrow for the weekend version of the breakfast. Before then, my name is Nyam Guru Agbeji. Bye for now.